Kim with Mother Time. Welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of my 2023 Americana craft with me. I have more Americana crafts to share with you. I cannot wait to show you these, so stay tuned. And if you are new here to my channel, welcome. I love sharing home decor, cooking, and DIY here on my channel. So if those are videos you enjoy watching, click that subscribe button below so you never miss a video. Okay, you guys, you know what time it is. Grab yourself a lemonade, sit back, relax, and let's get to crafting. First up, I'm making a really cute firecracker sign. You could also use this as a porch or a wall sitter. So I grabbed three of these star signs from Dollar Tree in their farmhouse section, and I'm removing the twine. Next, I want these each at different heights, so I'm just arranging where I want the placement, then I'm gonna draw a line and take these outside and cut them down. I also decided to trim the holes on top. I was going to originally fill them in with some wood filler, but I figured it was just as easy to trim those off as well. And here they are all trimmed down. Next, I'm going to attach scrapbook paper on top of these using Mod Podge. So I'm going to cover each of them with a coat of Mod Podge and then let them dry. This method is the easiest way to attach scrapbook paper. I've also done it with even napkins onto any kind of Mod Podge project. So I am adding a coat of Mod Podge to each of these and then I'm gonna let them dry. I also get my dryer out to help speed up the process, but you can let these air dry as well. Once they are completely dry, then I'm going to attach some scrapbook paper. The scrapbook paper I'm using is from Hobby Lobby, and this is just so easy, and it makes it so nice and smooth without any wrinkles. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried this method before or what your favorite method is for attaching things to your Mod Podge projects. Once the Mod Podge is dry, now I'm going to attach the scrapbook paper. Again, the scrapbook paper is from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going and adding the star scrapbook paper on top. And then I have this distress stripe one that I'm going to use for the bottom half of each piece. So I place my scrapbook paper on top of the dried Mod Podge. Then I have a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to place it on top of my scrapbook paper and then I'm going to use my iron to go over it and then look at the end result. It is attached to my piece perfectly without any wrinkles. So I'm gonna do the same for the bottom half. I place my scrapbook paper, then I have my piece of parchment paper on top of that and then I'm gonna go over it with my iron. And don't worry, I am not setting my iron down flat on my work area. It actually lifts up. I love this iron. I've had it for years. It's great for quilting too, so you don't have to lift it up. So now I am just trimming the scrapbook paper and look at that. It is on there perfectly flat, not a wrinkle. And I just love the way this looks. So now I'm going to flip it over and trim the star down using very, very carefully using just a box cutter or an X-Acto knife. I always am very, very careful. I don't like using X-Acto knives or box cutters. So I'm just carefully going around and trimming the star out. And here is the first one done. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other two. I'm gonna grab some scrapbook paper, place it down, then place my piece of parchment, and then iron over it until it adheres to the Mod Podge. Do the same, cut out the stars until I have them all done.
Next, I have three pieces of nautical rope that I'm going to attach to the top of each of them. For the small one that is going in the front, my piece of nautical rope, I'm not attaching fully to the back because when I attach it to the actual piece, it would stick out a little bit. So I'm attaching that to the top and a little to the front, but to the other two, I'm attaching the nautical rope to the back of them. Now I am arranging them and then I will attach them together with hot glue. Next, I'm going around and distressing it with my Distress Oxide in the color Vintage Photo. I get this at Hobby Lobby. And if you don't have Distress Oxide, you could just use a dry brush of some brown paint going around the edges with that. Next, I'm wrapping it with some twine and then I'm going to add a tag that says stars and stripes. This tag will be available to download for free on my blog. I'll include a link for it in the description below. I also distress the tag a little bit with that distress oxide as well, but you could also use a dry brush of brown paint if you don't have the distress oxide. And finally, I'm adding a rustic bell. I get these bells at Christmas, well, when they put their Christmas stuff out, which actually is starting now at Hobby Lobby. And this is how it turned out. You could attach a wire hanger to the back if you wanna hang it or use it as a wall or porch sitter. Next up, you know I love making these faux mini pies, so I'm going to make a faux cherry pie. So I have this ramekin, you can find them at Home Goods. They even had them in the fall at Dollar Tree. Uh, so I'm just attaching some foam in the center of this ramekin just to kind of add some height so I don't have to fill the entire thing with cherries. So just saving on the cherry. So I attach that with some hot glue. Now I'm adding hot glue on top and attaching these cherries. I'm just taking them off the stem. These cherries are from Hobby Lobby. Next, I'm going to make a crust with a piece of torn muslin. So I work in sections, I add a ribbon of hot glue, and then I like to pleat it as I go around. So I just gather a little bit with my fingers and I just continue to work in sections until I go all the way around.
So my original idea was just to add the crust, but then I got to thinking of adding a lattice top. I've done that before. I believe on my apple pie in the fall, I did that. And I just love the way it looks. So at first I just cut my muslin strips and place them on top to see how I like it. Then I take a second to decide and I decide to attach it. So if you decide to make this too, you could do either way. You could keep it where you don't have the lattice top. I decided to do the lattice top. So typically I would add this lattice top while well, I would add the cherries and the lattice before I add the crust, but either way it all works out. So I'm just gonna go around and attaching the strips now. Usually I would add this one and then I'd add the other two going in the opposite direction and then place the other last two on top, but I kind of got into a groove and just was just going with it. So I'll just have to weave them in, which is really no big deal. You can do it either way, but usually I like to add the center and then the two going in the opposite direction. And then the other two on top just makes it a little easier where I don't have to weave them in. But like I said, I got into a groove and forgot to do that. So I just weave them in and it's really easy to do either way. Now that I have all the lattice attached, next I'm gonna spray it with some spray glue and sprinkle it with some glitter. This glitter is from Hobby Lobby and then I use some snow glitter, which is from Michaels. And then I spray it with some spray glue on top to seal the glitter in. And then I added a little glitter to this cherry as well and attached it to the top of the pie with some hot glue. And now I have another piece of torn muslin and I stamped the word cherry on it. And I'm going to attach it to the pie along with this little piece of ribbon, which is also from Hobby Lobby along with the button. And this is how it turned out. How darling is this? Let me know in the comments if you like it with the lattice or without the lattice. I love making these pies. I've shared a bunch of them. Let me know what your favorite pie is that I've made as well. Next up, I thought it would be super cute to make a fireworks crate. I found this crate at Hobby Lobby on clearance for only $6.24. Hopefully you're following me on my Facebook or Instagram page. I've been sharing in stories a lot of the clearance finds I've been finding at Hobby Lobby. Hopefully you have a chance to check Hobby Lobby too. They've had a lot of good deals on clearance. So I have these stickers that are also from Hobby Lobby and I'm just gonna write out Fireworks Co. Then I decided to add the Uncle Sam's on top and then I also added Established 1776. So I'm going to go over the letters with Distress Oxide in the color Vintage Photo to give it a more muted look and it kind of just blends in better with the crate. And here it is, all done, super cute and easy, and I am so excited to incorporate this into my Americana decor. The 
up, I'm gonna make a super cute and simple fireworks company sign using this free printable that you can get on my blog. I'll include a link for it in the description below. And it fits perfectly in this sign that you can get in the farmhouse section at Dollar Tree. Now you could use some cardstock and just add some double-sided tape to that. And the good thing about that is then you could just remove it and reuse the sign. But I'm using some sticker paper. I love the sticker paper, it's from Target. I'll include a link for it in the description below. So I just cut the sign down and then I'm just using some sticker paper to place it inside of the frame. This print is also available in seven additional sizes from a five by seven all the way up to a 24 by 36. You can get that in my print shop. I'll include a link for it in the description below. Now I'm adding a bow to this sign. This is just some ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm hot gluing it to the corner of the frame and look at how cute this turned out. Next up, I'm going to make a mason jar door hanger using this mason jar sign from Dollar Tree. So first I'm removing this metal top and then I'm going to sand it down. My original thought was that I was going to add some scrapbook paper on top of it, but once I sanded it down, I kind of like the distressed look. Well, you'll just have to see what I do here because I end up adding the scrapbook paper on, but I wanted to show you this process anyways. And then you may like this side better and I like them both, but then I ended up adding the scrapbook paper on top just because it went with everything more. Anyway, so I'm just dry brushing some brown paint just to kind of give it a more of a distressed look. And then I will add the metal on top of it back. I also am then going to attach some ferns and some flowers that are also from Dollar Tree to the back of this. And the reason I removed this metal piece to begin with was I thought I was going to be attaching scrapbook paper. That was my original idea. So now I'm just attaching it back. Now I have a couple of ferns and some flowers from Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue them to the back of this mason jar sign. And I'm also going to add some raffia to the back. So I like to bundle it together and then tie it into a bundle and then hot glue that bundle to the back. And to cover all of this, I'm just taking a piece of scrap fabric and hot gluing it to the back. Now I have a piece of torn fabric and I'm gonna just tie it to the front along with a bell. And then I also hot glue on some Spanish moss as well. I also found these rusty stars, which I thought were so cool. They were in my craft stash. I've had them for a while. I wish I knew where I got them from because I would love to get more. I'm just adding them to the arrangement as well. I also have some pit berry I'm adding in. I'm also gonna add a couple little buttons to the bottom of the mason jar too. And I wanted to distress the sign a little bit more, so I am spraying it with some spray glue and then sprinkling it with some cinnamon and then dusting that cinnamon off and then spraying it with some spray glue on top. And here it is all done. I think it's super cute, but I decided to go with my original idea so it matches everything else. So I'm gonna take some of this apart. I'm gonna remove the Spanish moss and the bell and the buttons and the fabric. And then I'm going to also take off the galvanized metal top and add on my scrapbook paper.
So I'm just wiping it down really quick too. And then I'm going to add a coat of Mod Podge and let it dry. I'm gonna do the same thing like I did with the firework sign that I shared at the beginning. So I add my coat of Mod Podge, let it dry, and then I'm going to add my scrapbook paper on top. I added my coat of Mod Podge and then I'm just speeding up the drying process using my dryer. Once it's completely dry, I'm adding a piece of scrapbook paper on top. Then I'm gonna place a piece of parchment paper on top of that and iron it on. Like I mentioned before, I absolutely love this method for attaching my scrapbook paper onto my Mod Podge projects. I've done it with napkins too. It makes it so smooth, no wrinkles. So if you have fought with Mod Podge before and gotten a lot of wrinkles, try this method. It works and it's so easy. Now I'm just cutting the rest of my scrapbook paper down. And once it's trimmed down, I'm just going back over one more time, just so it's nice and smooth and attached, especially at the ends where I trimmed it down. Now I am adding some hot glue to the top and adding that metal piece on top back on. Next, I'm cutting down this Let Freedom Ring sign. You can get it for free on my blog. I'll include a link for it in the description below. I'm gonna distress it with Distress Oxide in the color vintage photo, and then attach it to the center of the mason jar using just some double-sided tape. I'm also adding buttons to the bottom corners of the mason jar. I just think it gives it a cute added touch. And now I'm adding some double-sided tape to the back of the sign and going to attach it to the center of the mason jar. And I'm also going around the edges of the mason jar with Distress Oxide in the color vintage photo. I'm wrapping a piece of torn fabric around the top of the mason jar, and I'm also going to attach a bell. And here it is all done. I absolutely love the way this turned out and how it coordinates with everything else. And last up, I'm going to give this patriotic gnome from Dollar Tree a little makeover. So my original idea was to distress this gnome, but as you'll see as this process goes on, I did change it up a bit. So first I am just spraying it with some coffee to give it a coffee stain. I didn't want to dunk it in some coffee because I didn't want it to get too wet. I just want it damp enough so it gets that stained look. And then I am actually brushing it because the coffee stain wasn't dark and I didn't want to get it too wet. So I'm lightly brushing on some brown paint. I'm using Apple Barrel in the color Burnt Umber. So I'm just dry brushing it on to give it more of a distressed look. It still wasn't as distressed as I wanted it. So now I am spraying it with some spray glue and dusting it with some cinnamon and then brushing it off to give it more of a distressed look. It's all coated with the coffee stain and then the dry brushing and then the cinnamon. I figure it's time to let him dry. In the meantime, I had another idea. So I have this fabric that I had in my fabric stash. So I figured I'd make some legs. So I'm just rolling it up. I think this fabric is from Hobby Lobby. I've had it for a while. Now you could even add some pipe cleaners in it too, but I just am rolling it up and adding some hot glue to it. So once it's rolled up, and then I'm going to cut it in half and attach it to the gnome. Mm -hmm. 
So I trim off his little shoes and then I also cut my fabric in half and then I'm going to attach it to where his shoes were with some hot glue. I also roll the top piece over just a little bit so it's a nice clean edge. I love the direction this is going. So now I decide to make some long arms as well. So I grab a different fabric and a smaller little piece doing the same thing. I'm just making a little roll. Again, you could do some pipe cleaners in it too if you want it a little bendable, but I kind of like this look that it's going with here. Um, using some hot glue just to make my roll. And then I'm going to cut off the little sleeves he has and I'm going to attach these on with some hot glue. So I did debate if I wanted to cover the top of his hat because it was really cute and it did go, but in the end I decided to. So I'm just cutting out a piece of fabric just to cover the top part. I'm not covering the entire hat, just this part, just so it all matches. Next, I'm wrapping the hat with some twine and then I'm also going to hot glue on a button. And I thought this cute little Uncle Sam could also use a Uncle Sam flag. So I have this Uncle Sam flag tag that you can download for free on my blog. I'll include a link for it down below. And then I just have a dowel that I cut down and I'm going to hot glue this Uncle Sam flag that I distress with distress oxide in the color vintage photo. And this is how it turned out. I think it is so cute. Now, if I was to do it again, I probably wouldn't go through the whole process of distressing him or maybe just a little bit on his belly area, but I don't think it needs all of the distressing, but all in all, I think it's super duper cute. I love the little Uncle Sam flag that he has too. And it's just a cute little makeover for this Dollar Tree gnome. Okay, you guys, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. And let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed the most. And for daily decor and DIY inspo, as well as lots of behind the scenes and stories, make sure you're following me over on Facebook or Instagram at Mother Time. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Yeah.